Welcome to International Securities Exchange's podcast series. Facilitated by renowned educators, ISC podcasts are intended to teach beginning as well as seasoned investors the ins and outs of trading. To find an updated list of podcasts, please visit www.isc.com slash podcasts. Please be sure to listen to our important message following this episode regarding the risks of investing in exchange-traded options. Now, the other thing that you need to be concerned with is that of gamma. Closer an option gets to expiration, the more gamma exposure that it actually has. That's why having a risk management plan before any trade is essential, in my opinion. So with that being said, the way that gamma can actually hurt you in this is that when you get really close to expiration, the underlying gets a little bit too close to the short call, let's say that can take some of the profits out of the trade because it's moving against you at a faster rate. The key to managing gamma is having a three-prong approach to any trade. And this is something that I tell people before they get into any trade, you need to ask yourself these three questions. What is your plan if the, stock, if the underlying goes up? What is your plan if the underlying goes down? What is your plan if the underlying goes sideways? By having that plan beforehand, you can help eliminate some of the potential emotional issues that are involved when trading. Now let's talk a little bit about volatility. You're buying long-term implied volatility as you do this. If long-term implied volatility spikes, meaning it goes up, that is a wonderful thing because you are actually long volatility when you're long an option. As volatility increases, the value of an option increases, assuming all other factors remain constant. If volatility drops, then theoretically that's bad. Now, if you're planning on holding the option, both options till expiration no matter what, it's a non-issue. But in the near term, it's actually bad because you have that longer-term volatility dropped in. The opposite is true for the short-term call. Short-term call, you hope that volatility sinks and goes lower uh, because you're actually going to be making money on the value of the option going down. Every option has its own specific implied volatility. Having an understanding of how it can move can actually be of great benefit to you. Now finally, let's talk about the temptress leverage. What level of leverage is fine for you? And folks, it's perfectly okay to say zero. There's no law that says you have to have leverage in your account by any means. And when I say that, if you were to have a approximately a $10,000 account and you were to, or let's just say a $7,000 account and instead of buying uh, an entire position on the euro you just bought maybe one call option on uh, the euro currency option and put the rest in, in money market then that would be considered a non-leveraged way of getting currency exposure. What level should you use? That's a question for the investor as well as the trader. In our opinion, at Know Your Options, over leverage is one of the biggest problems in all of trading. So, in conclusion, calendars are generally for a more neutral stance on the marketplace. Diagonals are typically for a more bullish, neutral investor. And respect the market. Leverage is a double-edged sword. Now, a little bit about us. We do managed investing. If you are interested, I'll give some contact information in a moment. Uh, we do self-directed brokerage. Uh, with added value from the standpoint, if you want advice on trades, we can help you with that. We do help with business hedging. So let's say that you have um, currencies that you need to hedge or um, some type of um, energy costs you need to hedge. We can do, help you there. And possibly insurance, depending on what states you live in. One thing that I do want to mention again is that we are only available to U.S. citizens only. Uh, in terms of how we can help people. Uh, I'm registered as a U.S. representative for Brokers Express. Know Your Options is the name of the DBA with which we, uh, is the name of our company. We broker our trades through Brokers Express. So I just want to emphasize that uh, we are only here, uh, if, you, if you have questions, you can ask as many questions as you want, obviously. But uh, if you're interested in our services, we are limited to U.S. clients only. This is our website. Feel free to visit it if you like. Uh, this is my email address. Feel free to contact me with questions via email. And if you have any questions uh, via phone, this is our number. So with that, 
I'm going to go ahead and turn it back over to Mr. Steve Meisinger. And if you want to take any questions, I'll be happy to answer any of these questions to the absolute best of my ability. Thanks, Mike. Questions coming in. Um, the first one is that uh, the attendee says, understand diagonals, but you know, isn't the diagonal a lot like a covered call? And what's the difference? Of course, we know that you can't do the covered call when you're trading FX options because you can't buy the quote unquote underlier. But what's the difference between a covered call when you're trading XYZ versus the diagonal? Could you go through that one again? Absolutely. A lot of people sell the, the diagonal call debit spread as a covered call with an option instead of a stock. I've never been a big fan of that analogy because it's just it, it's not true. Uh, it can be, but the underlying that you're holding is that, or not the underlying, but the long position that you're holding is different. On the covered call end of it, you own a stock, and you're selling premium against a stock. On the diagonal spread side of it, you own an option, and you're selling premium against the option itself. The two main differences, the first difference is that on the covered call, you have the risk of the stock, meaning if the stock goes to zero and you do take no action, you're going to go to zero along with it. On the diagonal spread, the only risk is the option, uh, and you can purchase an option assuming you're doing no leverage for a much lesser price than what you can actually purchase the stock itself. So it's kind of a catch-22. Do you want to take on the time decay risk of the option as well as the implied volatility risk of the option, or do you want to take on the stock price risk uh, of doing the covered call? And once again, in the FX option world, uh, that's not something, <clears throat> uh, if you're trading the ISC FX options, there is no, the underlying is the option price itself, is the, the price of the currency itself, or the price of the, the EUI, the YUK, the BPX, uh, or whatever currency you're trading. So in that case, uh, the diagonal spread is something with which you can use, and that's uh, what we use when we're going when we're working with the ISC FX options. Mike, is it possible that you could go and show us maybe? Of course, we, we don't want any recommendations. We're not asking for recommendations, but you know whether it was the Canadian dollar or you know the euro or the yen, just to show us how that diagonal would work. Absolutely. Can you give me the um, presenter? Absolutely. Or pass me the ball again. And folks, this will take a second for me to bring up the site. But Thank you for listening to our podcast. To find more podcasts on options, stocks, alternative markets, and market data, please visit www.isc.com slash podcasts.